So asking people to remember to comment last time was a huge success. I went from getting about 80 day one comments a video right now to 850 on that one in the first 20 hours. There were a few people who expressed skepticism that comments really do that much to help a video and my channel. Well, the results are in, and here are my last two weeks of videos. Discussing Legacy underperformed and got four subscribers. Toy World Long Haul, a video I was sure was going to get big views for it being a famously and hilariously bad figure, really underperformed and only gained two subscribers. Kingdom Ravage hovered in the low middle of projections and gained six. Discussing Bumblebee scraped to the very bottom of projections and lost a subscriber. Kingdom Shadow Panther did similarly, worse on the views, but actually gained subscribers. And then Toy World Bone Crusher is basically on the same course. Then we drop down to Wednesday's video and on day one, it got more views than either Bone Crusher or Long Haul had at the time. And the Long Haul video had been out for two weeks by that point. It overshot projections and gained 21 subscribers on the first day. So believe me when I tell you guys, commenting and liking the videos makes all the difference. So thank you for making that video a smashing success. And you can do it for this one too. Bringing me to another point, which is that a lot of people said they didn't know what to say in a comment. They just wanted to help. And that gave me an idea. If you don't know what to say, I think I can help with that. I'm going to endeavor to open all my videos with a question now. If you have anything else you want to say, feel free to ignore the question. This will just be for the people who don't want to say nothing, but are left wanting for something to say. So the question for this video is, does it surprise you how much comments affect the overall performance of a video? I'm sure you've all been told it does before, but this is probably the first time anyone's bothered to show you the actual real results. So anyways, let's talk about the Beast Wars reissue Megatron. You mean another excuse to do my Megatron impression? Yes! First up, since this is a reissue, we are going to look at the box again, since the box is a big part of the reason why some people will be wanting this. And yeah, this is what essentially amounts to what leader class boxes used to look like. Though, once again, the cardboard is a lot thinner here. I mean, look at this totem of the 90s distilled down into a cardboard cuboid. It reeks of radical design! The 90s were a mistake, but I'm honestly into this. It's kind of huge when compared to the more recent leader boxes. This is incredibly close to the original one, but there are a few telltale signs that this is one of the new ones. Like the half dozen or so languages on the box that result in every text blur being shortened so they could fit the remaining snippets, Megatron stats being truncated into the set with the new icons, though they do seem to be a straight up rip of the original boxes. I love how BS they are. Like 10 strength, 9 intelligence, 10 speed, 10 firepower. Let's be real here. Megatron is at best a 7 strength. Then 9 intelligence? That's fair-ish. If he's not a 10 though, then who in Beast Wars is? I guess Rhinox in pure book learning? 10 speed? Yeah, no, this guy's pulling a 5. A low 5. And 10 firepower? He has a laser. Everyone has one of those. What is this lie? I like how they color corrected the toy ad on the back of the box to make it more consistent with the new coloring, but they still got Megatron's head wrong. Also, gotta love how Ultra Beasts and Mega Beasts are now just Ultra and Mega. Because, explain, why? Why have you done this? Is it just because it's more 90s this way? Also, I see that Scorponok and Polar Claw have been replaced by Rat Trap and Cheetor. Why you gotta do my boy Polar Claw dirty like that? Anyways, that was the box. Don't want to waste too much of your time on that. So let's talk about the look of this figure, and yeah, this one isn't holding up like some of the others. And to be fair, I knew it wouldn't. It may have been many years since I had all the Beast Wars figures, but I do still have some pretty clear memories of them, and while I remember the other figures being good, I do remember this thing having its foibles. Like a pretty extraordinary amount of kibble that almost makes the Kingdom figure look reasonable by comparison. I'm honestly amazed that the show shrunk these down and didn't try to interpret these as wings. God, how much worse would the show be with Megatron fluttering around like a giant butterfly? And somehow, that's not the worst of it. He's got a dinner tray just hanging out behind his head, and somehow this smaller piece surrounded by much larger kibble is the more conspicuous flaw. At least with the wings, it kind of feels like a cape. This is just a thing. Even the head is getting in on the wing kibble. The right wrist is too. And the legs even have huge chunks of kibble hanging off of them. When is it normal to put kibble on the hips? This thing is honestly almost a shell former, and the colors on it leave me wanting. It's weird, this is supposed to be a re-release, but the original one was basically grey, and they've made it purple. I understand why, but it does mean that this isn't accurate like it's supposed to be, and you'd think I'd be happy about that. And I could have been if they just went whole hog on this, but they didn't. They made the plastic more accurate when it probably shouldn't have been, and then they left the chest and torso as unpainted as T-Rex. Who knew that that shitty lack of paint was a reference to this figure? That totally, 100%, absolutely, 100%, completely and utterly excuses that decision. 100%, 100%, 100%. Anyways, if they were going to change it, they either needed to go all in or they shouldn't have changed it. 
It's a re-release. The point is to give us back the figure we had as children. And barring that, then they really should have been making this as accurate as they could to the show version. So ultimately, we are left with something that is neither fish nor fowl, not being accurate to the show, nor the toy it's trying to resurrect. I would settle for either. And those arms have always been... a choice? The dino head wouldn't be too bad if the bicep was a little longer and the head were a little smaller. But there is just no saving the tail. It's all so structural, and the lack of any hand leaves me empty and dead inside. As a child, I disassembled this part in the hope of finding a hand somewhere in here. Now you may be like, that's fucking insane! It's nothing but holes! You can see obviously there is no hand in there! But my child brain was like, it has to be in here. I don't know where, but somewhere. I mean, there's not. I took a screwdriver and a knife to this, so I would know better than anyone else. The only thing to be found in this arm is a ruined toy. There's this lever and gear system in here so you can do this, but it always gets stuck and you can just, you know, do that by grabbing the arm. It's not hard. Head sculpt is interesting. The mutant head on this figure is way different than the rest. Really, most like Dinobots who had a similar, more helmet than other head. I have no idea what this is supposed to be. It looks like some kind of unicorn bird fish skull. And then you open it up and it gives Megatron's head bat wings. This was a horrible decision on the designer's part. It looks both hokey and stupid, and when the show made the correct decision not incorporating this part, it also now looks wrong. I knew three kids who had this figure as a child. None of us left these things on. Not only are they ugly, but they make the transformation worse and they're hard to open. That said, the head inside looks pretty much like Megatron, even if the colors are off and there isn't enough detail. I find it funny how they clearly tried to copy this facial expression in several frames of the show. Like, were they mandated to do that by Hasbro? Overall, once you take the scalp wings out of the picture, this might be one of the most accurate heads that had ever been made at the time. With a little more paint, this could even stand up to modern scrutiny. The accessories this guy comes with remind me of a different era of toys. For starters, it comes with this built-in squirt gun. And boy, if that doesn't look like a dog's dick. There is no good way of firing this when it's not in the robot, but when it's installed, it fires every time you open the mouth, which is harder to do than you'd think it should be. I have distinct memories of the little cap on the back breaking, and using it now, yeah, that's a risk. But you would be amazed how many shots this thing can fire off when fully loaded with water. I was firing it like mad just to test it, and it's easily over 100 shots. You don't see this anymore. You don't see a toy with an integrated squirt gun. Like this is a relic of the 90s. This and things that changed color based on if you hit them with hot or cold water were so popular back then. He also comes with a pair of spring-loaded missiles. Another thing you just don't see anymore. Well, more like spring-loaded anchors, but what happened to stuff like this? These used to be awesome. I mean, I used to lose them all the time, but while they were around, they were great fun. To be fair, Megatrons here are kind of lame. There's just so much unnecessary mass, the springs just can't launch them that far. So despite the phallic nature of his arm-mounted mouth gun, that's a lot of anatomy crammed into one component, I'd say that these are some solid accessories. Though, he doesn't come with a lot, which in a later review will become kind of inexcusable. Posability ain't great. He doesn't get a ton of range in a lot of joints, and there's just a whole lot of him you have to do battle with to move anything anywhere. Head actually has a lot of range, but the ears just bang on everything. Left shoulder pulls a 90, right shoulder pulls way more. Maximum left elbow. Minimum right elbow. Man, that basically doesn't even bend. He has a swivel at what I guess amounts to the wrist, none at the other, no hands, hips kick forward badly, out to the side good, and if you fight past the wings, back great, 90 knees, and toe and heel. He also has something of an ab crunch if you separate him from his backpack. So yeah, posing is pretty flawed and lopsided. He's no brick, this is definitely better than what came before him, but his contemporaries were better than him on this front. Transformation is actually remarkably similar to the kingdom, though obviously simpler. It's almost harder on account of the tail being spring-loaded and trying to fight you over whether or not it's going to work. And the alt mode is... Kinda creepy. It's a decent looking T-Rex, halfway between what we used to think they looked like and Jurassic Park, but the skin texture looks diseased. It does strike me, looking back on these, just how cohesive the old Beast Wars figures used to be. Sure, there are some big gaps and seams, but they are more successful than some of the modern Kingdom figures at looking like animals. Looking at you, Air Razor and Terrorsaur, obvious robots just popping a squat. This has honestly kind of got the articulation of a mascot in an inflatable suit. Very little in the legs, pretty much only getting knee action, some rotation and a tiny amount of splay in the arms. I am not the droids you're looking for. Yes. No. Yes. And rotation at the head. Ah! So he's got more posability than Kingdom Black Arachnia. Honestly, he's got a lot in common with Kingdom Dinobot. This is not a bad figure, but it does not hold up like a lot of the other Beast Wars figures are. This feels much more like a product of the past. Whereas the others are good enough by modern standards that newcomers might actually still find them satisfying, this less so. I imagine there's more than one someone out there who's never had one of these before and would probably really dig it now. 
but this won't be for everyone. Even at the time, I remember this feeling a little more basic than all the other figures. There's nothing here to hate, it's too quaint for that. But if you aren't trying to replace one you had as a kid, maybe don't bother with this. You might like it, but I'd wager you'd be unsatisfied. And that's not half what I have to say, but it's enough what I have to say. And I know, you know, what everyone else tells you to do at the end of these videos. So, if you liked what you saw here, please do that. And if you'd like to take it a step further, then please, share this video with any friend you think may be interested. I hope you all enjoyed listening to me waste your time.